Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge. My name's Josh, and today I thought I'd tell you a little story. Now, I'm sorry if you were expecting a Monster Monday, but I'm just away on my honeymoon at the moment, and I wanted to prepare some videos for you guys to enjoy while I'm away, but simultaneously, Monster Mondays take days and days of research, lots of editing, and a huge amount of time that I did not have spare in advance of crunch time for wedding preparation. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video all the same. It features a lot of content from a Patreon live stream where I tried out my very, very first landscape illustration. I was totally new to it. So I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, but I had absolutely loads of fun doing it. So I hope you'll enjoy joining me as we and a band of adventurers explore a new oasis that has erupted in a desert. Some weeks ago, you and your party had ventured to the western coast of the nation of Gorgosh, well known for being home to legions upon legions of orcs, massive roaming bands of terrifying and disorganized, scruntled and brutal savage warriors. Not your average holiday destination, but you traveled by sea at the behest of a cluster of elves, elven archaeologists to be exact, under the employ of the Jordalian Empire. Quests such as these, asking for outside help from people who are not High Elves, is extraordinarily rare. So you and your party were certain that they were desperate. The adventuring gig is certainly lucrative, and although many of you are in some way good aligned, it's not above you to exploit those in such desperate need, especially when it comes from those who so frequently look down their noses at anything that isn't a well-dressed High Elf. Once you arrived at the coastal encampment, you were greeted and treated, much like heroes returning from a long journey away. Or perhaps this is just how elves treat each other. Immediately, your bags and your pack animals were taken to lavish stables that look better than almost any inn that you've stayed in for many, many years. And collectively, your jaws dropped when you saw what the elves considered a small temporary tent for you and your party to rest in while you regain your strength before venturing on. The fine meshes and silks, gilded in every capacity imaginable, had elven runes sewn in beautiful mithril patterns, which the wizard of your group informed you warded the tent against mosquitoes and other insectoid visitors during the night. A good thing too, because the heat of this nation was already starting to get to most of you, especially the heavily armoured paladin, who was realising very quickly that they could no longer sweat inside their pressure cooker of armor, given time to change into beautiful and form-fitting robes that the elves had hand-sewn for your arrival. They sit you down to a banquet table, sat directly, or rather hovering gently over, the beach, whose warm waters lap gently against your feet, while you are served an unbelievable eye-watering banquet. A resplendently dressed high elf, sat at the opposite end of the banquet table, their shoulders adorned with ice-like crystals clearly giving off some kind of cooling effect as she delicately tucked in to a glass of chilled mead. Her voice lyrical like the party's bard's greatest tale, she informs you of your mission. As the sun begins to set over this tranquil and relaxing scene, the sky immediately bursts into a plume of pinks, purples, and ambers. Simultaneously, this elder points eastwards, further into the desert. She informs you that she and her team have been assailed by numerous orc raiding parties since they arrived, and they haven't the munitions, the spell power, or, frankly, the desire to put themselves in harm's way again. But their reason for being there is immensely important to their people. It seems that some ancient fae settled in the area, and may hold the key to understanding the ancestry of the elven people themselves. For centuries, no elves have known particularly where to search for such an ancient civilization or evidence thereof, and in truth they've been reluctant to do so, bearing in mind the savage inhabitants of this land. However, recently, an alarming number of viziers and druids have had visions of a particular point on the map, a map which she rolls down the table to the wizard of the party, presuming that they are the leader of your little group. Unraveling this scroll, you see that a delicate ring of elven symbols points to an uncharted region of the map, perhaps three days' ride from where you're currently sitting. Three days' ride, east, that is, 
right into the heart of a land belonging to a clan of orcs called the War Sons. War Sons with a Z. You've heard of their relentless brutality and their propensity to use burning weapons. No wonder these archaeologists didn't want to venture anywhere near. Suddenly, the rest of your group are somewhat hesitant as to what their next day may involve. But this elven elder impresses upon you the urgency and importance of this archaeological dig. She mentions that recently, the sands have swept away and uncovered the mouth of an ancient statue, which supposedly looks very much like an ancient elf. Days have passed, and from their telescopic instruments, they've been able to see and divine through elven magics. The oasis of green has sprouted forth from the mouth of this statue. She implores you to delve within and to recover any evidence that you can of lost elven or fey civilizations so that they can continue their research in peace. But they will definitely need you to clear out any of the orcs that may have stumbled upon this area in hopes of treasure and any of the traps that may have grown within through the wild magics that are spewing forth from the mouth of this statue, producing verdant life where none had been seen for perhaps thousands of years prior. Your group, while enjoying the hospitality of these archaeologists, are still very hesitant to put yourself in such harm's way. While half of your party are naturally very intrigued at the prospect of an ancient statue or evidence of an ancient temple, perhaps, you discuss amongst yourselves, perhaps how harmful this adventure may be. Discussions cease, however, when the Elder clicks her fingers and one of her subordinates drops upon the table, almost causing it to buckle and all of your meals to slide toward her end of the table. An enormous white stone or perhaps bone chest inlaid with easily an adventurer's year's wages of gold simply on the outside. Gracefully opening the lid, the chest lets out a small sigh of contentment. <sighs> revealing a bright light. Within this chest are gems the size of fists, the party's Goliath's fists, ancient artifacts from previous elven dig sites, and enough gold for your paladin to retire. The elven elder apologizes for the poorness of what they managed to, quote, scrape together, but there would be more if you manage to finish your adventure. Naturally, discussions immediately cease amongst your party, who all begin frantically nodding in agreement with the acceptance of this mission. The next day, you and your party head east, dressed in light elven clothing, much to the chagrin of the dwarf in your party. But your delicate drapings, the icy enchantments woven into their fabrics, and the magically chilled beverages that you have been gifted by your now benefactors is more than enough to take just the edge off of the searing heat of your environment. The monk of your party channels all of their focus into not shrieking in agony as their bare feet take hesitant steps across the sand. After many days journey and many bloody conflicts with wandering and aggressive orc raiding parties, your supplies dwindling, you come upon the mouth of this enormous statue. As a gentle breeze blows sand from around your feet, you notice that grass is growing just beneath the surface. Blooms of beautiful, ancient, and alien-looking flowers scatter their petals across the ground, and an absolutely resplendent and eye-wateringly beautiful tree casts its shadow over this enormous, cracked and worn statue, its petals and leaves drifting like fireflies glittering as they catch the midday sun overhead. And yet, despite this beautiful scene, the stone face twisted in anguish, twisted in pain that you see before you, the mouth of this temple, you assume, from which sprouts so much beautiful verdance, is enough to make you hesitant to enter. Still, you don't have supplies enough to head back. What horrors could the Fae conjure that would be worse than heading back with no water? I suppose it seems you have no choice but to enter the Oasis Temple of the Ancient Fae. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. This little setup or plot hook to a story, maybe, that you could use for your adventures. I had a lot of fun trying out a landscape for the first time, so I hope you enjoyed that too. If you did, please make sure to leave a little thumbs up down below, maybe favorite this video, and share it with your DM if this is something that you'd like to explore for yourself. Make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon as well if you want to see more videos from me, so you get notified whenever I release a new one. And if you want to support the channel in a very personal way, you'd like a copy of this illustration and the other ones that I do this month, 
you'd like to tip me for making these videos for you, and you'd like to have a more personal experience, getting access to private live streams like the one that I use some of the footage of today, or perhaps one-on-one -on -one chats, then I hope you'll head over to Patreon and join our little Patreon family. Your support really, really helps grow this channel and to help me make these videos every single week. It's an absolute dream getting to do this. I can't do it without the support of my patrons. So thank you so much if you choose to do that. But if you don't, I'm really glad that you stop by and that you watch the video all the same. Anyway, until next time, I hope you have fantastic adventures and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.